This meeting is being recorded. All right, awesome. All right, good morning, guys. Good afternoon. I hope everyone's having a good day. We're going to get started on Active Directory. Um, just just for anyone that wants to participate and talk, I, I made a, I made everyone a, a, a panelist. So you can actually talk and interact with me and ask me questions while we go over this. Um, I guess, Anthony, what do you know about Active Directory? What, what is it in, in, in a sense? What, what do you think it is or how does it work? Uh, I don't know too much. I, looked, I glanced at a web page the other day. I'm assuming it's something to do with if you're doing admin of a company and you're having to keep track of who has access to what um, files or what sites. Yeah, yeah, something like that, exactly. So when we think about Active Directory, you think about um, a a an installation. So Active Directory, you, you set it up on a server, right? And basically, when, when we talk about um, operating systems, we talk about computers, we talk about different systems, I guess, uh, server 2016, server 2019, what, what, what admins do, uh, typically they're, they're called like admins, we call them administrators or admins in IT, you call them server admins or whatever. Um, what they do is they, they set up Active Directory on a server, and that is something that you create to manage uh, users and computers, manage different things. You can manage computers, you can manage users, you can manage printers, you can set up policies. You could do a bunch of different things on there. So that in a nutshell is what is Active Directory. That, that's what it is. So it manages users, it manages computers, it manages printers, it manages a bunch of different things. Versus when you go to, I guess, when you go and buy a computer in a, in a, in a Best Buy, right? So, you know, a, best, a computer in a Best Buy is different. You're, you're buying something out of the box. It's not on a domain. So when you're when, when when we're doing a comparison before I do because before I, I like to teach this is how I teach I don't like to get into the server because you cannot I cannot make a video on a server or I cannot talk about Active Directory if you don't know the basics right because you're not gonna understand it right so the important thing here is that when you get a we do compare two things you compare Active Directory right and you compare a computer that is a home edition. So there is a home edition computer, right? And then there's a pro edition. So you have two different types of operating systems, whether it's Windows 10 or 11, right? Um, there is a home edition. Now home edition, you cannot join that to the domain. So you cannot join that to say, for example, Ketsite.com or, or Facebook.com or, or LinkedIn.org or LinkedIn.com. You cannot do that because a home edition does not have the ability to join to a domain, which is what I'm going to go over today. I'm going to go over that a little bit. So you, you need to understand the differences between a Windows 10 Home, a Windows 10 Pro, and why we use Windows 10 Pro and why we use Windows 10 uh, Enterprise. Because a lot of companies may use Enterprise or they may use professional Windows 10. And that goes back to CompTIA, right? If you, if you, if you go and read the CompTIA A Plus book, it actually covers the operating systems. It covers different types of operating systems and what they do and what the advantages are of each one. Like one, one has a home group, one, you, one has a domain group that you could join it to. And then the person is added to the domain and then they, they are basically being controlled by Active Directory, if that makes sense. Does that, does, does that make sense, uh, Anthony? Yeah, three different versions. So enterprise, we don't want to have a larger have more features, allow it to do more specialty compared to like a home version. Somebody yes. at home is not going to want to um, do all the fancier, you're doing it for yourself versus doing it for a whole business corporation. Yeah, exactly. So it's very, it's very, it's very locked down. Like when you, when you're adding a computer to a domain, it's locked down by your IT, your IT admin, or your IT administrator. Like they could do so many things on your computer. They could change the wallpaper. They could like you log in, you 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 have a folder automatically uh, assigned to you. You log in, um, maybe the start menu. Maybe you cannot restart. You could log out. They, they, they could they could they could really like put policies down in place on your operating system, so you can only do your job if that makes sense. You can't do more than that. So that's why mm -hmm. we 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 have computers on a domain because it makes it easier for an admin to manage it if that makes sense. So yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to yeah, share my screen, guys. I mean, yep. I, the way I like to explain it is that, I mean, think about the name Active Directory. If you think about a directory, it's a 
list pretty much of all the active users, computers, servers in the company. It's just a big list and is usually organized in some fashion that makes it easier to find things. That's really all it is. And then tied to that directory is things you can apply to those things, if that makes sense. That's the easiest way for me to explain it. Yeah, it's a, for me, like I say, it's a, it's a database or it's a, think of it as a phone book, right? You have a phone book of directories in it with your first name, your last name, and your information. That in, in a nutshell for me, that is what is Active Directory. Basically, it's yeah, a, it's a phone book of information. So. Yeah, it could have like your title. It could have like the location you work at. It could have who you, who's your manager. It could have, you know, what teams are you on? It's just like a good list of information of everybody in your company. And that's only if your sysadmin is actually like keeping up with it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, guys, I'm going to share my screen, all right? Let me know if you can see my screen. Screen one, you guys see my screen? Yeah, I see it. It's going to be a little boring. I'm sorry about that <laughs> because I had to cover, like, fundamentals, you know, like, it's very important. So remember I talked about operating systems? Like, you, 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 everything runs on an operating system, right? Whether it's your phone, whether it's an iPhone, an Android, just anything that you have has an operating system, whether it's your mobile device, a, a, a PC or tablet, right? So obviously you guys know what that is. I, I like to go over basics because some people that are watching today may not understand what we're going over today, right? So when we think about computers, we think about an operating system. Like how does your computer run, right? It runs on Windows 10. Maybe it runs on Windows 7. Maybe it runs on Windows 11. Same thing with Mac machines, right? Mac has Sierra, uh, Mojave, right? A different operating systems. So when, when this is how your computer runs and has all the things embedded in it, whether it's like the start menu, which is what I have right over here, and all these other applications, right? So that's basically what an operating system is in a nutshell. It's the stuff that's running on a, on a computer and you need hardware for that. That's this hardware right here. I need hardware for that, right? And this, I don't wanna go in depth with this, but know the differences between 32-bit and 64-bit, right? You need to know the differences between 32-bit and 64-bit in the work environment. Um, obviously, uh, most companies may be using 64-bit and other companies don't have money to do 32-bit. Like they don't have, I mean, they don't have money like to, to, to get 64 bit because they're on 32 bit. If that makes sense. Cause some, some companies, they don't, they, they can't afford um, licensing and stuff like that. So there's 32 bit, 64 bit, right? 32 bit is slower it only in, in, in the memory when it comes to memory. And, you know, we talk about this whole conversation about operating systems and memory and, and uh, Eric can correct me on this, but you know, 32 bit, you can only run four gigs of Ram or less. And then 64 bit, you could run more than four gigs of RAM. So when when you're working in a job environment, know the difference between 32 bit and 64 bit. Like maybe you're helping a user, right? Maybe you're helping a client, right? They're like, why is my computer so slow? And then you go and check their memory and they have they have 32 gigs of RAM on a computer, right? They have a lot of memory, but they have the wrong bit. They have a 32 bit operating system. So it's not gonna read all your memory if you have a 32-bit operating system, hence why we, we, we install 64-bit so that it reads all the memory on that computer because sometimes that happens. Sometimes what happens is we, we have 32-bit, 64-bit, and that's the same with applications. Applications are actually, they do run. Some run on 32-bit and some run on 64-bit. So that's very important. Um, I don't know if, 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 if uh, Aaron wants to say anything, but that's how I look at it, you know, like you have to know the differences. It's very important, especially when you're in a job environment and you're troubleshooting like IT issues, all right? And then remember I got over like the operating systems, right? You got to know the difference between a home edition, a pro edition. Like a lot of this stuff is yes, 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 right? Like this is yes, 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 home, Windows home, yes, yes, yes. Join on a domain. Look at this. So in a domain, you cannot join a home edition on a domain. It doesn't let you do that. That's not what the, the home edition is just for your house, right? The pro edition is to to actually you could add it on a domain, you know? So that's the reason why like I stress like like entry level stuff because you need to know the difference between a home edition, a pro edition, and also in some environments they use enterprise. So you need to know the differences. This is very important because you cannot join a 
Windows 10 Home on the domain. You can't do that. It's not, it's for your house, right? It's, you can't do that. So going back to um, operating systems, right? You need to know memory. You need to know what CPU, hard drive, right? User input, output, motherboards, graphics cards. And, you know, like this is an example of a, a memory, right? Uh, RAM, right? Random access memory. So you need to know how memory works in the, in, you may need to know how to do this in your job environment. It's very important. And then there's CPU, right? You have CPUs on a motherboard. Then you have a hard drive. Hard drives is what stores data on your computer, whether it's a regular hard drive, which is this one, or an SSD, right? And know the difference between a regular hard drive and an SSD, solid state drive. Actually, a solid state drive does not use mechanical CDs and it runs a lot faster. And then you have your graphics cards, right? So this graphics card here, if you see, it has like many display ports over here, right? Um, you put this on a board, on a motherboard, and it powers it on. And then the fan comes on, and then you're able to use the connections here. And then obviously, you need to know about drivers, right? You go online, you download your NVIDIA drivers, whether it's NVIDIA or, or, or something else, you download the drivers for this, and then they're able to use that, you know, that, that graphics card. And then you have your motherboard, right? And I know a lot of people don't like to talk about this because it gets very boring and dry when it comes to talking about operating systems and hardware. Um, this is very important to know because you want to know how everything works, right? Uh, on a, on a, on a simple level, right? So you have to understand like CPUs, memory, um, nobody really like, like self bridge, North bridge. Like I don't look at that. Like nobody really cares about that, but these are fundamentals you need to know, right? Like CMOS battery, right? CMOS battery. When, when you, when you, if you have a bad CMOS battery, you, you change the date and time, right? On a, on, on a, on a, on a motherboard and the CMOS battery is messed up. It goes back to that date and time. It reverts back because you need to change the battery on it. And then when you have an incorrect time on a computer or on a motherboard that the time is incorrect, it messes with your operating system. So then you can't go on certain websites. You can't do certain things. And then your Outlook or your email and everything is all out of date. Like the, the, it's not syncing correctly, right? You can, you can even have this issue. You could even have this issue on a domain controller. And Aaron could, co could correct me if I'm wrong, but if your domain controller the time is not set up correctly, it can mess with all your computers and it can mess with every computer that's on the domain. So it's very important that you know what a CMOS battery is and it's important that you understand fundamentals. And that's why I always go back to that, you know? Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you know, like, I don't like to go in depth with this, but obviously, you know, know that like the application stuff, the operating system stuff, the user interface, the the kernel, the hard drive devices, you know, the input devices, how they work, display, network adapter, um, memory, and the processing unit, the CPUs, it's all important stuff you need to know. I, I, I could go over Active Directory and just go over that today, but I'm not going to do that because I want to go over basics first before we go over that. And then there's random access memory. Obviously, I talked about this. You need to know how memory works on a computer. It's very important. If you have the wrong memory, on a computer or if the memory on a computer, which is, I'm gonna go back to this, right? If the memory on the computer is, is, is messed up or corrupted, you're gonna hear a, a, bunch, of, a bunch of beeping sounds, um, which is kind of interesting, right? So when you install memory on a computer and the memory is messed up, you'll probably get like five beeps or six beeps or something like that. You get like a lot of beeps. And that's because your memory it's not compatible with that computer. It's corrupted. It could be so many reasons why that memory doesn't work. So it goes back to layer and it goes back to understanding um, physical hardware, right? And obviously CPU is a central processing unit, right? Know how that works. So sometimes what happens is um, when we go over, um, when you have computers that, that the, the CPU is messed up, you, you start to see slowness on a computer. And that's, it's important that you know how that works. So sometimes it's because that CPU is going bad or that CPU is, is missing uh, thermal paste, right? You have to put thermal paste on the CPU and that fixes it pretty much. And thermal paste is basically a, a um, 
something that basically cools the CPU from getting hot. Because the CPU gets really hot, then it starts to get slow. It starts to slow down. So we put thermal paste on on that CPU, on that central processing unit. It's a little the little chip. So um, it's this right over here. Like you, you got we put we put thermal paste on this on on top of this. Obviously not inside of it. On top of it to cool off the CPU. And then there obviously, you know the the thing with IT right. There's always competition, right? So there's competition with different CPUs, right? AMD and Intel, right? Like which one is better? Like people people would sit here all day, right? Argue about video games, right? Argue about AMD, argue about Intel. Like which one is better, Kevin? You know, really depends on you and what you're trying to do on your computer. But there was, there's always going to be a battle with AMD and Intel on which, you know, which CPU is better. So there are different, you know, CPUs for AMD. There are different CPUs for Intel. And then hard drives, obviously, like, no difference between a regular hard drive and an SSD. Like, I have an SSD on this computer. This computer has an SSD. It's extremely fast because I have an SSD. A regular hard drive, like, well, I went over up here, right? Let me go back to my hard drives right here. It's a CD platters, right? It has a bunch of CDs in there. That's going to be slower versus this one. This one is electronical. Uh, it's different. It's, it doesn't have CDs on it, so it's going to be two times faster. So the, 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 the best way, I guess the best way to upgrade your computer if it's extremely old and outdated, right, is just changing, that, changing it to an SSD or adding more memory to it. That's like, the, that's like the level one troubleshooting, right? Typically, when you have a laptop or a computer that's out of date or extremely old, what we do is we, we, change, the, we change the memory, we add more memory, or we change it to a solid state drive. So that's typically what we do. And then you have your graphics cards, right? Some graphics cards are embedded on a computer, on a PC that you cannot remove it at all. No matter how hard you try, <laughs> they crazy glue the living hell out of that, 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 that graphics card. And you cannot change um, the, the graphics card. It's just, you can't, you can't change it. It's embedded on it, right? Some of them are not embedded on it. Some of them are, are you can replace as much as you want. Like I have, a 2080 Ti graphics card right now, and if I wanted to replace it, I could replace it with something else. So, um, and that's pretty much it for Windows 10 on uh, troubleshooting and understanding Windows 10 in a basic nutshell. You guys have any questions for me before I go over servers and uh, actually create a VM? Anyone? Let me know. No, I'm good. All right, cool. So what we do is I'm gonna the the, the quickest way to create VMs and servers is basically knowing if your computer can run uh, uh, VMs, right? So usually what I do is I go here and I type MS Info 32, right? You could see my computer right here, right? I have 64 gigs of RAM. Um, you could, like, I have a lot of memory. I could do whatever I want. So what we, what we typically do is we go to VirtualBox, right? And then we download um, VirtualBox 6.1. And if you want to get more into it, right, because some people don't like it, you could download VMware, right? You could go with VMware and download download VMware and set up an account and everything. So what I do, I do VirtualBox because it's much easier to do for some people that are brand new. I have it installed already over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a brand new uh, VM, right? So we're going to call it... Server. So I was I was gonna do 2019, but we'll do 2016 today. Um, I'm gonna call it test, right? And got all these different drop downs right here. I'm gonna change it to that, right? And then it says memory, right? How much memory do you want to use on your VM? So remember that when you're allocating memory, you're taking memory from your computer. So I have 64 gigs of RAM. I could do whatever I want with that with, with the server, right? Like. You got to know how the memory works, right? I have 64 gigs of RAM. I could allocate eight. If my computer is not going to crash or anything. So when you're allocating memory on a VM, you need you understand that you're, you're giving memory away from your PC. So if your computer is running extremely slow because you're allocating a, a memory on it, it's obviously because you need more memory on your personal computer. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to give it eight, right? And then same thing, hard hard disk or hard drive space, right? I hit create, VDI create, right? Dynamic allocated, next, right? 
how much hard drive space do you want to give it, right? So it goes back to your computer again. So how much space do I have? I have 665 gigabytes of hard drive space, right? Obviously, if I have way less, it won't work. So I'm going to put 50 on this. So I'm going to hit create. Now it's set up, right? You're like, Kevin, uh, uh, what do I do now? So you have to go online and download the ISO. So if you go to Microsoft Windows Server 2019 download, right? And you go here. And then there's an evaluation center. You go in there, right? And you download it. So basically, you're downloading the server now. So there's the server 2016. You go in here, right? Uh, ISO continue, and then you download it. You get it for free for 180 days. And actually, there is a command in the command line to keep extending it over and over again. I think three times or something like that, or four times. So you can play with this as much as you want. Once you once you uh, download the ISO, it looks like this. It looks like a CD. See the CD on my desktop? It looks like, like that. There's a little CD right over here. It looks something like this. You download it, it looks like this. And um, I'm going to use that CD today, actually. So you hit start right here. And I'm going to pick a CD. Like It's going to ask me like right away. It's like, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to use the CD? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to use the CD. So I'm going to hold add. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to grab the one on my desktop. And I'm going to do choose. And I'm going to hit start. So when you do that, it's going to grab that CD, the one that the one that's on my desktop. And here you just say next, unless you want to change anything. Uh, hit install now. So this is what you would see if you actually had like a physical CD and you plugged it into like a physical server, you would see these exact same things. So he's just doing it on a little virtual platform, like an emulator, if you want to think of it that way, just on his computer. Yep. So we're going to install the desktop experience one. I'm going to click on that one. Um, and then, you know, obviously in terms of agreement, um, we're not upgrading every. We're not upgrading anything. We're installing, so we hit install, right? And obviously here, if you if you know anything about Windows 10 operating systems or you know anything about disk partitioning and stuff like that, you would change partitioning settings in here. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna install it all in here, so it should be fine. Hit next. Now it's installing. Just give that give that a couple of minutes. Do you guys have any questions for me? Anyone? Why is it? Um, why? What's the ISO mean? ISO is, is like, um, it's a CD, like what, what uh, Aaron said, CD. It's a CD. So basically, I, I inst I'm installing a CD on this VM, on this virtual machine. So think of it as, um, you know, when you watch a movie, you know, when you, you know, when you, I don't know how, I don't know how old you are. I'm not going to ask you how old you are. But you know, back in the days when we used to watch movies, we used, we used a DVD, right? You put it on right. a on a on a on a TV, right? Like some TVs have that 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 DVD player, right? And then you start watching the 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 movie, right? It's almost the same thing, but the difference is this: is that we're installing something, right? So I, the ISO is a DVD or a CD. It's this thing right over here on the right hand side, right? I'm grabbing this, and I'm installing it on this on this virtual machine on this VM. That's basically what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, this is what, that's what it is. So I'm installing this information on this VM. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because I don't want to physically do it on my computer. I have Windows 10 on my computer. Why would I Why would I put a server 2016 CD on a computer? That doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't do that. I mean, unless you want to do that, it's entirely up to you. But I, I don't recommend doing that. That's why we use virtual machines. That's why we use um, uh, virtual box or we use VMware, right? is so we could play around with this. I could play around with this. And if I break it, it's okay if I break it, you know? Like if I mess this VM up, you know, you could you could break it, you could mess it up by accident. It's okay, because you could always redo it again. You know, it's not gonna mess anything up. So I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna remove the disk because it's done installing. But that's there's what it is. Like, there's a benefit the to installing that ISO directly on hardware. Because that means that it has direct access to your RAM and direct access to your 
CPU. So it, it, will, it, will, it would be a little bit faster if you installed it directly on the hardware. So if you had like an old computer that you wanted to like burn that ISO file to an actual physical CD and plug it into the computer, you could do that. Um, and it would be a little bit faster, but just to make the like lab experience easier, you just do it all on the same computer using like the simulation software. Exactly. Yeah, we, we don't, we, we try to, we try to like, so you think about a lab, right? <laughs> you think about lab, you think about being a scientist, right? And that's what it is. We're experimenting right now. So we're, we're basically, we're, we're, we're like a scientist. We're experimenting on, on a VM by setting up server 2016. And now that we're setting this up, I, I literally could just play around with Active Directory. And I'm going to show you today how to install it. And we're going to set it up together. So that's why I'm doing this. It's pretty... Um, pretty cool, actually. Um, what you could do with VMs now, because a long, a long time ago, and Aaron could correct me if I'm wrong. A long time ago, this stuff used to be expensive, like crazy expensive. Like you have to like hardware and 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 ISOs and everything. Everything was expensive back then. You couldn't do that. You couldn't do uh, 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 VMs and um, emulators and stuff like that a long time ago. But now you could do that. So now, now if you just have your own computer, all you need is a cheap used computer, and you could actually create VMs on it. You know, you don't need anything. You don't need expensive equipment right now compared to a long time ago. So, so take advantage of your resources. On you could you could go online right now, right, and buy a cheap computer and then do what I'm doing today, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So why does the what what does the downloading the Windows server do that the pro of the home can't do. So what I went over earlier today, so you're, 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 you're this is a, this is Windows server 2016. Uh, I'm, I'm using, I'm using Windows 10 on my computer, right? Right. This is not a server. So a server and a Windows 10 machine are, are two different things. This is not the same thing. I can't, uh, I cannot, I mean, I could install Active Directory. I can install RSAT tools, but I, I cannot set up a server on this Windows 10 operating system. That's not what it's designed for, you know? Okay, so the VirtualBox is just simulating the idea that if you did. So um, I have... I, I'm, I have VirtualBox, so I could, I could set up the server right here. This is a server 2016, right? This is not the same as a Windows 10 operation. These are two different things. So... Windows 10 is what a user or a user or a company or a client will use to log into a computer. Server 2016 is an actual server that manages that computer. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Yeah. I just. It's so a two different. It things. looks a lot the same. It looks a lot like Windows 10 and Windows Server. The the way they look are, have gotten a lot closer together, but the all the software and the security that's built into server operating systems is much higher than what's the, what Windows 10, Windows 10 Pro, and Windows 10 Enterprise have. Yep. Yeah, that's always throwing me off a thing, just the features and servers you can do. Like the screen you just had up a second ago where it showed management, all that stuff, this one. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is not in the regular Windows 10 anyway, right? Correct. OK. This is where you'll start to see where he actually adds roles and features to this server operating system, like Active Directory is one of the roles you can do. There's plenty of other things you can do with a server. You can install like Print Manager, or you can install like like File Server Administration. And there's a lot of other things that you can install on this operating system that a, a regular Windows 10 installation wouldn't have the ability to do. Exactly. Exactly. Like when I go back to, when I go back to windows 10, right. And, and I'm going to make it a lot more easier for you. Right. On a, on, on a, on, on a server, this is a server, right. On a server, you could, you could go here and I could go here and make a new folder. Right. And, and let's just, let's just call it Kevin. Right. For example. Right. And I right click on it and I go into properties. Right. And let's do sharing and do share. Right. And then now it's, now it's a share folder, right? So now if you go here and the company people I can share with, I can share with 1,000 
or 16,772 people. Like it's, it's a lot of people, like, or even more than that, right? To go, look how many people I could share this folder with, right? This is on a server. If I try doing this on my personal computer, you could only share with 20 people on it. This is why we do things on a server. We don't do it on a, on a local computer. So if I go here and go into tests, right? Go to properties, try to share it, right? Just gonna just create a share folder, right? And then if you go back to properties, right? Do event sharing. I can't go up. I can only share it with 20 people. So that's the reason why like certain, that's the reason why like when you're an admin or you're, you're an administrator or IT, right? You do it on a server. You don't do it on a local machine. Like we don't, we don't share folders on a Windows 10 machine. That's, that's like, that's not a good practice, right? That's bad practice. So that's why we do it on a server. So there's certain things that we do on a server for a, 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 an IT infrastructure reason, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's what it is. Like I, I just showed you like the 10, 10 does a lot of things, but then 10 doesn't, cannot do what we're doing today. Certain things it can't do on it because it's not, it's, it's not designed for that, you know? Um, so what I'm doing right now is for everyone that's watching my screen, and you guys could like you guys could stop me at any time if you have questions. I'm I'm here to listen to you. I'm not gonna get mad at you if you ask me a question. I, I I'm I'm all ears. I like to listen to people. But what I'm doing now is I'm I'm gonna change the name of this of the server because I don't like the name that it has. So if I went to I went to this PC right. I right click on it. And I hit properties right. And look at the computer name. So it's Win nine four two seven blah 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 right. I don't like this name. So usually what I do is I go here. I hit change settings. I hit change. And I change it to DC zero one, right? And you'll you'll see like like, and Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong. You see like every company has their own convention, right? It's DC zero one, New York, DC zero one, Chicago, DC zero one, Cali, K, K uh, like C C A L I, California, right? They change it because you want to identify the, the server and where it's located at. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So that's what we do. We usually, we usually what, 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 uh, like, a, like, uh, I guess like a sysadmin, right? They will, they will, they will change the name of it because they want to identify where that server is located. Cause they may be in God knows where, like New Jersey, right? New York, maybe California, maybe Chicago, right? So what we do is we, we create a naming convention for it. So then we could identify what it is. So then nobody else has to deal with the headache, you know? Does that make so sense? If you're like, so if you're like, say, your first day on the job as a new company and you go to the admin server, is that server already going to be named before you get there? Um, if yes. you're doing, it, yes. If you're doing help desk IT support, yes. And you, they're not going to give you access to the server. <laughs> and if you're doing IT help desk support, like they are not going to give you access. That's just too much power. That's like, that's like me giving you the keys to the kingdom. You know, we don't do that. We give you limited <laughs> access. So, so who, ha who has the access to the server when server manager when they at their job, the system admins? System admins, probably like infrastructure engineer, uh, help okay. desk. The reason why the, the reason why I say help desk won't have access because they, they'll probably have our set tools. So what we do is in, in a job environment, um, help desk, help desk or, or the sysadmins and, and Amber could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, um, the sysadmins, what they do is they, they're like, I'm not gonna give you access to the whole service. There's too much access. Instead, what they do is they give you our set tools. So if you're a help desk person or IT support person, you may, you may have access to our set tools. You may not have access to our set tools. So our, our set tools only gives you access to active directory. That's it. That's all you have access to. So you could open that up, right? And you could do password reset. Maybe you could unlock an account. Maybe you can ask someone to a security group. Really depends on how your company is set up. Does that make sense? So what are our set tools? It's tools just... are ways to access the features that are on this server without actually being able to remotely log into the server itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when 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 I when I when I install um, Active Directory, you're gonna be like, okay, this makes more sense now, right? So what I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna go into Manage. Remember we talked about adding roles and features. So on a server, you have add roles and features, right? Obviously, you cannot do this on a Windows 10 machine. So you hit next, hit next, and I'm gonna hit next. 
And you see these all these functionalities right here. Um, we're going to do Active Directory Domain Services, right? I click on that one. That's the one that we're going to install. And when you click on it, it's going to install a bunch of other things here, right? So do Add Features. Um, you hit Next. And if you want, you can add more stuff to it. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to hit Next. And then here is if you want to put it on the cloud, which is I'm not going to go over that today. But you could actually create a server and add it to the cloud which is something that I'm not going to do today. Like It gets more complicated after that. So I'm going to hit install after that. Right. So out the box server, whatever version of Windows server you're installing, this is 2016, but out of the box, it doesn't have Active Directory installed on it. It doesn't have the file services. It doesn't have IIS. It doesn't have all those features installed out of the box because you might want this server to just do Active Directory, and you might want to create a whole nother server, another virtual server that just does your file management, and then another one that just does your DNS management. You might want to create a whole nother one. So that's why out of the box, it doesn't have those things installed. So he's installing Active Directory now on this one. Yep. So now, now I'm promoting my domain controller. So. This is where where you you have um, your different forces or your different domains, right? You know how you have like LinkedIn.com, Google.com, whatever, right? Me, I'm I'm using Kevtech, right? Dot com, right? And every company has their own domain controller set up. Like they have their own domain that they that they set up, right? And I'm using Kevtech.com, but other companies may use their personal company, whether whether it's LinkedIn or, or, or Facebook or whatever, right? And then what happens is once you create that 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 forest or that domain, that is that is what you use to join your computer to the domain. So it'll be like minus Kevtech.com. So I have to know what that is so I can add my Windows 10 computer to Kevtech.com, if that makes sense. Uh, does that make sense? Guys, what do you mean? You say join it to the uh, to that web to that website, that domain. So, what I'm saying is, is that see, I'm creating this domain controller right here, right? Yeah, yeah. And captech.com, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you create when you create Active Directory, you're creating a domain as well. I'm creating this domain captech.com. And if I want to manage my workstation, my Windows 10 machine, I have to add it to Kevtech.com. And then Active Directory from, from the back end, we can control that computer. Okay, okay. So like I could go here, right? To make it more sense, right? This PC, right? Right click on it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go really slow because I'm going too fast, right? So I could go into C Explorer right here. And then I could go to this PC. I could right click on this PC, right? I could go to prop. This is a Windows 10 machine, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go rename this PC advanced, right? I'm mm -hmm. gonna hit change, right? I could join this to the domain kept.com and hit okay and then set it up and have it have it have this computer get managed by this server. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Yeah. So then I could control that computer. I could I could set up policies on it. So like what that means is the person logs in, I could change the wallpaper. The person so, logs in, um, they, there's certain settings you could change on it on the Active Directory, right? Okay, yeah. So when you add them, add them to the domain, then you can roll out policies on whatever the end user is on that domain, right? Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why we. That's why. That's why we. 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 We in a work environment, right? We have. Um, we, we have domain controllers. So basically you're managing, when you have a domain controller, you have Active Directory, what it does is it manages all those computers in one. Because um, what if I have 500 computers, right? And I have to manually manage them one by one. That would be a big headache for me, right? Why would I do that when I could just set up Active Directory and have all those computers part of the same domain where I can manage it as a whole? Does that make sense? Yes. So that's just the benefits of having Active Directory. You can manage a bunch of computers as a whole on Active Directory. You don't have to kill yourself. Instead, you're you're basically just managing them, you know, on the back end. So 
which which you may have access to, you may not have access to it. If you're a help desk person, you probably won't have access to this. So unless you're unless you're a, um, you're a jack of all trades, like some help desk, some people in help desk have access to everything because I've seen that happen in a work environment. Um, some companies don't do that. They don't give you access to the keys of the kingdom. So like I said, it goes back to it, uh, what company you're working for. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Hopefully I answer your question. All right. Yeah, she did. Cool. So now, like, I want to I, I want to install this server uh, Active Directory. I want to install the domain controller, right? And the thing is with me, I like to do it from PowerShell. So what it, what what's really cool about this is that when you when you're setting it up, it gives you a script to set it up. So I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna copy and paste this. And 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 Aaron loves PowerShell, by the way. Like he's a PowerShell guy. Me too. So. I'm gonna exit the wizard. Like I could go hit next, 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 install, right? Instead of me doing that, I'm gonna set it up from PowerShell. So what you do is you right click on this, you run as administrator. Um, I'm gonna copy and paste that whole thing. So it says here, import, install domain for us, right? And you guys are like, what does this even mean, right? It looks like gibberish, right? It, it's not gibberish. So if you look at this, it says install domain for us. What is the domain name? It's capsite.com. Um, what is a BIOS name? Kevtech. What what path do you want to uh, install this to? And it says Windows N NTDS, Windows System Volume. So when I press Enter, it's going to ask me for a password, right? I'm going to put my password in there. And I'm going to confirm the password because I have to create a password uh, for setting this up for the first time. And it's going to install it now. So now it's installing Active Directory. And it's setting up everything with a domain controller on it using PowerShell, which is kind of cool. Like I, 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 so I used to be afraid of PowerShell a long time ago, but now I'm not like you, you got to play around with it. You know, you get once you, I guess, as you get started in it, as you, as you're, as you're brand new to it and you're learning in your job or on your job, like try to dabble with PowerShell a little bit as you get comfortable in your job. Obviously you don't got to know it right away, but it makes your life a lot easier especially when you're trying to do like certain things you could you could do it a lot easier on powershell so does that make any sense does that make sense guys so what does uh what else can powershell do oh that man it's like easier? oh man i could go here i could i could tell you hundreds and hundreds of stories about this <laughs> so with powershell you could you could you could do calendar access for for exchange admin center you could join a computer to a domain on powershell you create a bunch of scripts that makes your life so much easier when you're, when you're helping a user or you're working with somebody or you're trying to do something, you're basically order, you're doing automation kind of. So that's what it is. It's, it's extremely cool. And how do you learn to, where do you learn all with those, what all the words mean that translates to what you want you to do? Yeah. You just, you, at, at the, to be honest with you, like for someone that doesn't do PowerShell, like me, I was not a PowerShell. I just Google it. You just Google everything. So I go to, I, I use the power of Google, right? And mm -hmm. I'll do like um, how to unlock an account using PowerShell, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go in here and it actually Microsoft has a whole document on how to do it. Look, see? So you can just go online and Google, just Google everything. Like at the end of the day, like, Unless, um, um, and I'm going to say this because some people are, because people that are watching today are, are, are watching on YouTube because I'm going to upload this later on YouTube. Like at the end of the day, if your job doesn't let you use Google, man, you, you better leave that job, man. Like every, every job you should be allowed to use Google. Like I don't see why not. Right. You yeah, Google, Google the living hell out of that answer. Right. To find a solution. So as a new, Google it. So as a new like help desk person, would I be using this PowerShell too often? No, not no, not, not often. Um, okay. But, 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 and I'm going to stop. I'm going to say, but, because um, it makes your life a lot easier. So as you, as you get job experience in your first job or you're starting out, it's definitely very good to, it's good to understand how that works because it makes your life a lot easier. So you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to manually click on everything, right? You could just run a script. Does that make sense? Right. So, so if you look at all these buttons that he's clicking on, as he's clicking on all these different screens, 
as he's clicking on all those different things, when you're doing help desk and you're needing to reset a password and you're doing a search for their username, and then you're having to right click their name and then go to properties and then go to reset password. And then you're having to type in the password and then you're having to type it in again to confirm it. And then you hit enter and it says, are you sure you want to, like all that, all that clicking and all those buttons, all that's doing is creating a PowerShell script that's going to run at the end of it. So everything mm. you do with all those buttons is already being used with the shell. So if you just learn the shell, you are skipping all of those button clicks, if, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, I definitely see that. It would definitely be useful, which makes me wonder, too, as a new help desk person, besides resetting passwords, what are the most common problems that um, help desk person deals with besides that? Or a common problem is going to be anything. Like it could be like the thing is, is that you your every work environment is different. So remember, I I I said that. Remember, I said that 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 not all help desk jobs are created equal. So you got to keep in mind that that some places you you're going to have access to Active Directory. Some places you won't have access to Active Directory. Because I worked in, like, I worked with a, I work with a lot of different students, right? So when I'm working with students, some of them have access to Active Directory. Some of them do not have access to Active Directory. And also on top of that, uh, depends on the infrastructure, how your company is set up. So you may have access to Office 365 Exchange Admin Center, right? And you're allowed to give someone access to a mailbox. So instead of manually clicking, like I could go and, you know, I could, I, I could make another video on this, right? I could go here and I'll show you right now, actually, because you're, you're asking me, you asked a good question, right? I'll go right over here and I'm gonna open up Exchange Admin Center, right? And I'm gonna change it to classic admin center while, while this while this VM installs the services, right? I could go right over here and and uh, get a help desk ticket, right? And and like I said, some help desk jobs you'll have access to this, you won't have access to this, right? Instead of me, instead of me manually adding someone to a mailbox on this, right? on the GUI or on the browser, right? If you know how to do PowerShell, you could do it in two seconds. Correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron. You do it in two seconds. You don't gotta click 10,000 things. You just do it in two seconds. So so as you're working in a job environment, you 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 will you, you will see that some in some instances you may want to use PowerShell and it makes your life so much easier. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody said Windows PowerShell Cookbook already is a great book for PowerShell. Cool, man. That's good to know. But does that does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's how it is, man. Sometimes, to be honest with you, the 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 more the, the the less you do the less you do with clicking, the better you are with with work because then you you save a lot of a lot more time, you know. You don't gotta kill yourself, you know, clicking a thousand things. Instead, you're just running on a script. But, but when you're brand new, right? Like I don't like to, I don't like to say this. I don't like to promote PowerShell like crazy when you're brand new because you're still learning, right? And it'll be overwhelming information for someone brand new trying to do PowerShell, right? I I rather you learn the basics in your job and understand how to do your job first. Then when you understand how to do that, then you could jump to PowerShell. If that makes sense, then you can start making things easier in your work environment. Once you understand how your job works, does that make yeah, sense? That, that, yeah. And that's what I'm trying to think about too, as far as starting your help desk job, you know, are, I mean, comparing one company to another, as far as like common problems dealing with, say, you know, like somebody's Wi-Fi router is not functioning properly or only works this computer and not that computer or what's causing, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think what are the problems that, you know, people would probably usually deal with on a regular basis that has come up a lot. I mean, it can be as basic as I don't know how to rotate a PDF. Like, how do I, like, my screen is rotated horizontally and I want my screen to be vertical for today. Can you show me how to 
make my screen. I mean, it can be as basic as something like that. It could be as basic as I don't even know. I push the space bar on my computer and my computer doesn't turn on. And then it comes to find out that they're just pushing the power button on their monitor and not the computer that's under the desk. Like it, it can be as basic as that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but it could also become very complicated. Like I'm working in this program that is for CAD software and I'm having issues getting it to print in the right format for this large format printer that I'm getting to. So I, there's so many, it, it completely depends on the company yeah. and like their workflows. So it's really hard to give an example of what are regular things. But I mean, in general, you're going to be helping people who just don't know how to properly use their computers or probably do their jobs correctly. And they like to blame the computer for yeah, why they're and, not and, and, completing and, and, their tasks. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like I, I tell people at the end of the day, like, um, and this is, this is going to sound like, this is going to sound like the way I think is different from other people. Like I I'm, I'm grateful that they make mistakes. Why? Because I have a job because of them, you know? Yeah. If someone makes a mistake on their computer, it, it, it's actually, it's actually job security for me because not everyone's going to be good. At, not everyone's going to be good with their computer. They're only going to be good with doing their job, not their computer. So that's why they pay me to take care of their, their IT issues. That's how I look at it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. So if if I if I get paid for helping somebody, that's totally fine with me because I like doing it, you know? But other people, they, sure. the thing is, with, with like I say, like help desk, IT support, that's not for everyone because some people are not good with working with other people. So that's why they do other roles. They don't do help desk because they're afraid to work with other people. They're afraid they're going to get mad at them. But if you, if you have um, empathy, right? And if you're good with customer service and if you know how to talk to somebody, man, they'll love you. They'll call you and they'll love you. So that's why it goes back to building a relationship with a client, right? If you build a solid relationship with a client, they're not going to get mad at you. You could you could go there and fix their issue and they'll love you for what you do. So that's how I look at it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some companies too. Do you ever get to the part of, well, I guess it's probably sysadmin duties. Um, they deal with like, programming issues or writing any kind of code or anything like that um some companies some companies yes um to be honest with you i i i have a friend that does help desk and he does programming it's kind of weird but he works in a hedge fund environment so it's different so it depends okay. i guess it goes back to like it depends on the company so hopefully that answers your question because he, he he does he does do um um he does programming and he does help us. He does both, but he doesn't. He doesn't make like regular salary. He makes over ninety k. It's different. So, wow, that's what it is. Yeah. So, as so normally, most help desk people aren't gonna be doing much coding or programming. Then, uh, it it, it no, they're not. Vince? But some like a small percentage of companies might do that. Some some okay. companies may do that. Okay. Yeah, some companies, not everyone. Some companies. It's like it goes back to that that the. The operating systems, right? Um, some mm -hmm. companies use Windows, some companies use, use Mac, and some companies use both. <laughs> so it goes back to that conversation too, if that makes sense. So is it good to start learning? Do I even know which one to learn? Um, uh, I, 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 the way I, the way I measure it is based on where you live, because everywhere, where, where you live is different. So. It's not, it's not the same everywhere. Like where I live, they use Windows machines, right? Where mm -hmm. Aaron lives, they probably use both. Where you live, they probably use Mac only. So it depends where you live. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. That's how I look at it. But um, let me go back to this. So you saw that installed Active Directory. It, it looks different. Look at this. It's Captex slash administrator, right? Now, now actually Active Directory is 100% set up because it has this. It has this, the, the domain captech.com. Remember I created captech.com? It's right here. And if you go to other users, right? It says sign in to captech right there on the, on the bottom, right? And then if you do this, it tells you the name of it. Like if you click on the bottom right here, it tells you the name of this, of this computer that I just, the server of this computer, DC01-1. 
NY New York, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign into this and I'm gonna show you Active Directory. And it's gonna make more sense to you now, right? Because you were asking me about it. It's gonna make it's gonna make more sense to you about Active Directory. Like Kev, remember you asked me about RSAT tools? Mm -hmm. Right? So when we talk about RSAT tools, right? Um, RSAT tools, right? Active Directory using the computers right here now. See how we, I installed it, right? So it's right here, right? Let's give that a second. Give that two seconds. Takes a while to open. So it's a little slow when you, when you install it for the first time. Yeah, there we go. So when you, when you set up RSAT tools, right? On a Windows 10 machine, right? You, you, you'll probably have access to this and this only, right? Not the whole server. See how we go into server manager and there's access, you have access to all these other things, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Our set tools only gives you access to, to users in computers, active directory. That's what it is. Depending on the company, they'll, they'll, they might give you access to this. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can only open this up only <laughs> pretty much. You can't do anything else but this. So now, now it comes the, the the important things, right? Active Directory. Well, what can you do on Active Directory? Why do we why do we set it up on a virtual machine? Like, what why why do you need to know this, right? If you go to a if you go here right now, right? If I go here and I go to Indeed right now, Indeed.com, right? And, and I, if I type Active Directory, right, and I, I put that in, right? You, you, everywhere you go, you need to know this, right? You need to know Active Directory. If you go here. And if I do F, uh, control F, and I type Active Directory, right? It tells you right here, Active Directory. All these jobs ask for Active Directory. Even an Active Directory, like remote job, like paying over 100K, right? Active Directory, right? Active Directory. You go over here, engineer, Active Directory, right? So anyone that's brand new today, whether you're on my, whether you're a panelist or you're watching today, you know, I want you guys to practice on your own and learn Active Directory. It's very important. Like this is important stuff you need to know. Like in a help desk IT support role, you may need to know this. So, what can you do with Active Directory, right? Like, what's what's the purpose of it? So here you go in here. I have Kenta.com, right? That's my domain controller, right? I could go in here and I could join my Windows 10 machine to this domain, right? and do a bunch of stuff on it and manage it, right? For today, I just want to go over basic stuff. So what can you do in Active Directory? You could go into users, right? I could right click on it and I could go new and I could create a new account. So we create a new user account. So I, I'm going to call the uh, Aaron, right? For example, Aaron um, and yeah, let's just call it Aaron and I'm going to call it Aaron, and I'm gonna hit next. And I'm gonna create a password for him, right? Welcome one, welcome one, right? And it says user must change password next login. What does that mean? So when he logs in for the first time, he'll be prompted to change that password, that welcome one password. So I could check it or uncheck it, entirely up to me, right? Hit next, finish. So now Aaron is there, right? Um, what are What are some important things you need to know? about Active Directory besides creating an account? Well, there's like so many things, right? I could go here. I could reset the password for him. Maybe maybe he forgot his password. Maybe Aaron calls me like, Kev, I can't get it on my computer. Can you reset my password, right? So you have to go in here and you know reset his password. Maybe you get a call from Aaron again this time, right? And he's saying, I can't get it on my computer. It's locked out. You go here, you unlock his account. You double click on him, you unlock his account. You hit apply, you hit okay. Maybe Aaron needs access to a, a folder or a security group, right? You right click on Aaron and you do add to group and then you add him to a group. So I could go here, right? And I could type administrator and find now and I can add him to the administrator group, right? So those are like a little, those are like the little, little teeny bitty little things that you may need to know in a work environment if you're doing help desk level one. You guys have any questions for me so far? So that, that unlocks his ability to get emails from whatever company he's working for, pretty much. 
yeah, yes. Yeah. So if he's locked out of his computer, he can't log into the computer. So if sometimes what happens is some people will fat finger their password on their computer when they log into it and they get locked out. So then you get a call as help desk and you got to go in here and unlock their account. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that when someone gets locked out of their account, it could be anything, man. I'm telling you, like it could be because they, they, they put the wrong password on their computer they can get locked out maybe because they put the password incorrectly on their phone because some companies have emails on their phone too, right? So if you fat finger your password, you could get locked out of your, your, your account on your phone. So then they call help us and help us to unlock the account. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so here I like me, I like to... I like to go a little more more like detail with, with help desk stuff because me, I, I get I get I get hyper when it comes to help desk. It's just me. It's the Kevin thing, right? I just get excited about it. So what I like to go over right now is one more thing for today and then we're done for today. And that is advanced features or advanced view settings, right? So if you go here and you hit view, right? And you can do this on your own VM. Like when you guys like later on today, when you guys are, are um, you know, when we're done with this meeting. You go and you could go and practice with this, right? You hit view, uh, users and computers, groups, computers as containers. You click on that, right? And when you do that and do advanced features, right? It has all this other stuff over here, right? And you're like, yeah, like, Kevin, what 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 is this? Is is this what what's the purpose of this, right? So when you do that, and if you go into users and you you go into like I double click on Aaron, for example, right? If I if I go here and I right click on Aaron and go into properties, right? Not double click, go to properties, go to object, right? It tells you it tells you where that person is located at on Active Directory. It tells you where they are located at. This is this is why I enable certain things on it. It does it does that, right? Also, when you in, when you set up or you enable advanced features, right? If you go into um contributor editor right it gives you more information about that account so it actually tells you bad password bad password count zero you scroll all the way down tells you more information about that account then the, the given name is aaron right it tells you uh log out count zero right because it hasn't logged in yet it tells you, you scroll all the way down all the way down right all the way down the name again aaron right the SID, the SID, SID, right? Scroll all the way down, all the way down. It tells you when the password password was last set. Right here, it tells you. Password last set, 11, 11.07, right? Scroll all the way down. The SAM name, the SAM account number, you scroll all the way down. The principal name, you scroll all the way down. Um, the, when it was last, when the password was last changed, uh, when the account was created and that's it. That's pretty much it. It gives you a lot of information. So this is why I enable that feature. If I go back here and obviously turn that off, right. And right click on Aaron, go back to properties. The, the, those tabs are gone. Look, see tabs are completely gone. They're not there anymore. So that's why I enable that. I could turn this off, right? I could go back here, do advanced features. Go back to Aaron, right click on Aaron, and then all these other tabs are available. Does that make sense? You guys have any questions for me? Not right now. So. Yeah, so that's what it is. I'll show you one more thing before we get out of here. So I'm going to sign out of this, right? Uh, actually, let me do this real quick. Let me log back in for a second. So does 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 Active Directory make sense now to you? Do you somewhat do you understand it somewhat? Yeah, it's better. Sorry, I'm about to watch it again to get a little bit of the all I'm taking it all in. It's a lot of information, man. I'm telling you, like yeah. when you but when when now now you see it, you're like, oh, it's just that, right? Like it's not that bad, right? Right. Yeah. So I have I have this VM set up. I have this. I'm gonna turn this on, right? And I'm gonna turn that on. Let's give that a second. Now he just put the Aaron account in the generic users group. Normally, at a company, you would have 
multiple folders on the side, like different groupings, and you would put different users in different folders. So say your marketing department, you're going to say marketing, and then you're going to have all your marketing users in a folder. And then you're going to have a group called marketing computers, and you'll have all your marketing computers in a group. So it's easier for you to like keep everything organized in Active Directory. Right now, he just put me in the, the Aaron name in the generic users group, and that's fine. But when you get to a larger company, it would be a lot more organized. That's correct. That that is that is absolutely correct. So when you work, when you go to a job environment, you notice that they have uh, OUs, organization units, right? They have different types of OUs. They have one for HR. They may have one for IT. They may have one for finance. They may have one for, I guess, compliance or something else. And that's what they do is they separate each individual user based on the OU that they're part of. So if someone's starting tomorrow morning or whatever, um, we put them on, a, on their OU that they, the, the, the department that they're part of. We separate the departments. And we do that We do that to keep ourselves organized. You know, it's like, it's like an IT thing. We don't put everyone on users groups. We have different OUs for each individual person. Does that make sense? So they're all in their own separate group of people, marketing departments, one group and management's like another group of folders. Yes, we, we, we try to, we try to keep it organized because we, we don't, we, we don't like to put everything together. Best, best IT practice is to separate each person in different OUs. I mean, you could put them all together. I, I don't recommend that. Um, some companies put everything together, some companies separate them. So it, it depends on the company, but for, the, for best practice, I recommend you, you separate the OUs, you know? Right. Because if they were like, well, I want everybody in accounting to have an, a license to Adobe Acrobat, it makes it easier for you to be able to just select all the users in the accounting OU and right click and say, add to security group. Adobe licensing, and now it's a lot easier to manage at a larger scale when they're all organized like that right off the bat. Yeah, it makes sense. So right right now what I'm doing is, see, see this Windows 10 lab right here, you guys? This is my Windows 10 machine, and this computer is part of the captech.com domain. So I, I created two VMs. I created two VMs beforehand, before we jumped on this call, just so, just so I don't have to do all the other things behind the scenes, right? So when you're working help desk or IT support, you you will find that that um, your whole infrastructure is already set up, right? They're not going to give you access to the whole server, but you'll have an infrastructure already set up. So I'm trying to log in as this person, Kev Rocks, right? And I purposely fat fingered a living hell out of it to lock his account. So what happens is when you remember I told you you have to you have to know help desk right you have to know how to unlock accounts right I I fat finger this guy's password Kevrox right and I keep putting in the wrong password over and over again eventually his account's gonna get locked out because he's putting in the wrong password and obviously for security reasons you you have to unlock the account you you, you get the information make sure that. Like it says here, the reference account is currently locked out. We cannot log into it, right? Make sure that that Kev Rocks is Kev Rocks. Because sometimes people try, try to log in, you know, it's security, right? When we talk about security, going back to IT security, right? You want to confirm that Kev Rocks is Kev Rocks, right? It's not some random guy trying to get on the computer, right? So what we do is we, we tend to keep the account locked out until that person calls us and then we unlock their account. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Kev Rocks is locked out right now. Kev Rocks can't get in. He calls me. He's like, okay, Kev, uh, Kev Rocks calls me. Oh, Kev, I need you to unlock my account. Okay. And then that's when you start asking questions. Like, Aaron, I don't know how you do it, but usually what we do is we ask questions to confirm that that user is the user that we're talking to. You know, it's not some random guy calling me. So what I do is typically when I'm working with someone, I ask them, who, who's your manager? What's your username? Where do you live? What department you work for, right? And if they give you all that information and it's correct, then I go ahead and unlock their account and I reset their password if I need to. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kev Rocks is right over here. 
Now, if we double click on him, if you go into account, you see it's locked out. Like, see, it looks different. Remember that that other. Remember, I went over the other server. It, it looks different. This looks different because he's locked out right now. So I'm gonna unlock his account. You hit apply. Hit OK. You double click on him. OK, again, he's not locked out anymore. So then I'm gonna. I'm like, and I'm talking to Kev Rocks, right? I'm like, Kev, um, do you? Do you remember your password? No, I don't remember my password, Kevin. Can you change it for me, please? Okay, I'll change it for you. So then you go here, right? And okay, let me reset your password for you. Um, okay. Um, do you do you want do you want your password? Do you want to be able to change your password when you log in again, or do you want to keep the password I'm giving you and you could change it later on, right? And like, oh, you know, make sure that I could change my password, right? Like, I could change it when I log in again. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go here and use a machine's password in the next login. So I changed the password from my cat login again. I give him I give him the password, right? He logs in. It says the user must change password before signing in. Hit OK. I'm like, all right, Kev, I'll just make just make a password for you and log in again. And let me know if it works. So he's going to make a password. And doesn't like that password. Like, okay, try again, Kevin. So. So you gotta, you gotta, no, you could change the settings here, obviously, but like, that's how I, that's how I do it. You could either, you could either have them create their own password or have them keep their password up to you. So now you should be able to log in again. Hit okay. And he should be, able, he should be good after that. Um, and he should be able to log in. So do you guys have any questions for me? Yeah, I just thought of one. I saw a job posting the other day and it didn't mention that directory, but also mentioned knowing Office 365. Is that like just learning the PowerPoint in Excel or is that something else? No, Office 365 is is a lot. Very involved. It's Outlook, troubleshooting, Outlook, troubleshooting, Excel. Then you have to, you have to know the admin side of it, which is probably like... Um, mailboxes mailbox delegation stuff like that and i have a bunch of videos on that i don't know if you've seen any of my videos i have a bunch of videos on that and i have videos on how to get office 365 admin for free i don't know if you've seen that i didn't see it yeah i'm gonna look for it yep so that that that's pretty much it for today i don't want to go in depth because then 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 um it gets crazy with this i'm gonna shut this down i'm gonna shut this down right i'm gonna stop sharing uh and let me know what you guys think. What do you guys what are you guys thoughts? Did you guys learn anything today? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Mark? Yeah, this was great. Um it, it really helped me to like kind of put everything together when I was shadowing on my, my friend Wes. And now I'm gonna install it on my on my computer to see if I can and play around with it now. Awesome. It really helped. Thank you. You guys have any questions for me? Anyone? Uh not right now. Hopefully, did you guys understand what I was talking about today? It's not complicated. It was right. Pretty, you explained it well. I mean, uh, um, examples that that would help actually seeing you do it. Awesome. Um, Aaron, are you there? I don't know if Aaron is there. Yep, I'm here. Do you have anything you want to add to this before we wrap it up? No, just add us on LinkedIn. Hit us up on Discord if you have any issues trying to yep. set up your own labs. Yep, yep. All right, guys, I'll let you guys go. I'll give you the rest of your day. I don't want to bore you to death. <laughs> I hope you guys have a good day, all right? And the recording will be on YouTube if you guys want to watch it again, all right? All right, all right thanks. thanks. All right, guys, take care and have a good day. All right. You too, Brian. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.